So this this tweet is nuts, man. Um, yeah. It's actually pretty bro Did you see my response on it? I did see your response, so I actually haven't read it. Right when I saw this and I saw yours, I was like, oh, this is like a great one to read through. Because I did read yours because you – okay, so hold on. It, can, do you want do you want to read it or would you like me to read yours? Yours is I yours is mine. just mind blowing. Yeah, I'll read mine. Um, I've told this story before too, but basically, just so you guys have context. There is a a person who said that they had a very rough time at Blizzard, and explained all of that with you know their entire story, and it's it's a massive story. If we look at this, it's like just a bajillion posts long, like outrageous amount of stuff, right? Um, so what I did is I responded with my own one of my own stories. And I'll, I'll read this off here. So I said, working at Blizzard was easily some of the Welcome best the and worst though. experiences I've ever had you. anywhere during my career so far. And I, I worked there for seven years, for context, from 2009 to 2016. And uh, I grew up there as well. My dad actually worked there for 23 years as a cinematic director. So I have been with Blizzard since the beginning, since it was Silicon and Synapse, and then Chaos Studios, and then Blizzard Entertainment. So I've been there since the beginning, right? Can I interrupt for one quick second? Yeah. So as it, it became Blizzard and, you know, this is like War, War, Warcraft 1 to Warcraft 2 phase, like right in there, there was such motivation for me to learn programming because of how much I looked up to Blizzard. So, like, I understand. during those days, like, it, I, it's like just even you saying these things, it gives me goosebumps because, like, you lived the life I wanted to live. And then when I read this, it's, it's shocking. So keep going. Sorry. I just wanted to, like, yeah. put that in the minds of everybody who grew up in the 90s. Blizzard was like the place, if you were going to go as a programmer, it was the yeah. place. Not all the glitters is gold, man. And I, <laughs> I think that's the part that really sucks here. You know, so I said, a number of the issues you've described here are not unique, which is the real nightmare in response to his his negative story. And I said, when I was on Night Crew in QA, which was my first job at, at Blizzard in, in 2009, is that's where I started Night Crew QA. And we worked all night and then I slept during the day. I was paid ten fifty an hour when starting, which... The starting rate for a grocery bagger at um, Trader Joe's at the time was $12 an hour. So in Southern California, you can't live off of that, right? You can barely yeah. even rent a room. For those so that don't was, know what Southern California is, just so like a little context, what, what was 2009 rent for a studio? $1,500? Yeah, something like 18? that. I couldn't yeah. afford that. I lived, I lived out of a room, um, and then eventually I lived out of a room from a, a lady that basically made halfway houses for younger people that couldn't afford to live anywhere else. And she halfway had converted... houses for people that don't know is people who are usually getting off yeah. drinking and trying to yeah. uh, reassimilate into working life. And she did that specifically for younger people that just could not make enough it to live in California was the problem. <laughs> and she, she Jeez. was able to do that kind of thing for me, which is great. And I had another buddy who I met through there. And then like, there were, I think there was like six of us living in that house. Cause it was a converted old folks home that she had bought and then did that, <laughs> which was awesome. Wow. So that's how I survived. Right. So the grocery bagger Trader Joe's started at $12 an hour. I said, this is impossible to live on in Southern California. It makes no sense for one of the largest gaming companies in the world. One day during our shift, we were told a critical task had come in and we all needed to be on it immediately. The task sheet was a piece of paper and they handed it out to all of us and it had like 30 or so steps on it. We were told to read the entire thing and then perform the task. So I read through it and like about halfway through in the middle of the task, it said, turn off your computer, get up from your desk, leave this behind, leave the room. And I read the rest of the task to make sure that there wasn't anything more because it said, read the entire task. And I left the room. The last two people who left the room got fired. The rest of us went to day crew. They were dissolving the team. That's how they lost their jobs because they took the longest to get to that point in the test. That oh, was it. Oh my God. So I, I didn't even read that. Oh, I didn't even, I like misread that. I yeah. didn't realize it was just, it was a race to whoever just left the room for or last. Yeah. Yep. Oh. And, and, and oh the way goodness. that they, the way that they posed that was, those are the people that don't know how to read tasks. So you're going to day crew. Everybody else is getting fired. And that was it. And Imagine when getting I went, fired the, for being yeah. meticulous. Like that, yep. as a QA. Like that and it's, it's even worse, too, because after I went to day crew, they didn't even talk to me about like the pay increases or anything like that. They're like, hey, you're going to day crew now. And I noticed my next paycheck was smaller. And I was like, what the hell's going on? And they said, oh, yeah, you lost 50 cents an hour. That was a night crew differential. That was it. I just lost yeah. $1,000 a year because I went to day crew. And, and, that was, and that was that was it, you know. And during that time, fifty cents. Like, I mean, if you're going from ten fifty to ten, like that's a meaningful difference. Yeah, that's the difference between getting an year. egg in yeah. your ramen or just ramen. Like that's that's like real difference. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was horrible. It was probably the worst experience I had in my life. But I was too young to realize that that was like really not okay, right? I didn't learn that until yeah. much later because this was my first big job. I had been working freelance before this, so I was used to kind of shitty environments. I was like, okay, I guess this is just how this works. And I didn't realize that this is wrong until I think halfway through StarCraft II, 
we had our manager, like our, our, our lead of QA, our director came down and uh, morale was really low because we had been on StarCraft II for over a year at that point of overtime. And we ended up doing two years of overtime because the team had this weird, the lead of the team had this weird idea that QA could get ahead of development. So we just worked crazy right. hours on shit that was not ready for test. It made no Before, sense. Right? Oh, okay. Can you just, can you just like, give me like a, like, what's yeah. a three sentence argument for how QA can get ahead of development? Can you just, can you just there's like none. throw that out there's for me? None. <laughs> there's none at all. They never had an argument. They're like, yeah, we're getting ahead of development. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So like, we're doing it. And I was like, but. but what are we <laughs> testing if we're ahead of them? <laughs> so we would end up testing stuff that just wasn't ready and then punting oh. it back to dev. And then dev would be like, why did you test this? And then punting it back to us when it was ready to test. And we just kept doing it. We we're just spinning our wheels, doing nothing. It made no sense. So that like, sounds so emotionally painful testing things awful. that are already like pre known to be broken. Yep, it was awful. And so while this was going on, morale just shot through the floor. People were losing their minds. Actually, I watched a couple of people get divorced on that team because they weren't home all the time with their spouses, and like it just it started to oh. collapse. Right, people's morale went nuts because it was over a year. So after this happened, our director had to come down to like rally the troops. Right, and he comes down, and we're all sitting in in front of him in chairs, and he's he's trying to give a speech to everything. And halfway through the speech, he stops. And he says, but I want to let you know that you're not the rock stars, that the devs are rock stars, and any of you could be replaced at any time. In the middle of this morale boost speech, this was the first time I'd met their director for our department. And I'll never forget that shit. Because my, my lead, because I was on the editor team in QA, my lead got up and walked away. And he, he motioned for us to leave too, and then everyone started to leave. They bailed on him in the middle of his speech. And he was like, well, what's, what's going on? What did I do wrong? And HR got so many complaints that he had to come back and apologize. And during his apology, he said it again. <laughs> that was the second time I got to meet him. And it was just, it really set the stage for me to be like, wow, QA is really treated like shit, right? Like I'm, I'm not treated like a person here. And I did everything I could at that point to leave the department. And over the next four years, I eventually got my chance. And I actually gave a document to Ali Vitani to build, he was the director of Battle.net at the time, to build a uh, application security team for all of Blizzard's websites globally. And I got that job. They made the team and I became the lead of application security. And there's my, there's my Battle.net coin, man. So, it, so uh, can, can we roll that back just yeah. a quick second on that last one? Because uh, you do say, because we've had this, like, we've had a brief discussion in the past, a couple of these like online oh, yeah. banters about QA being considered engineering or not. Is this yeah. really like the turning point where you feel like QA has to be treated like engineering because or else, yes. I mean, that whatever, however it inhumane is. that was, that was like the turning point. I'll give you an example of why they should be, right? I, I am a special exception. I have a lot of skills for things that general QA normally wouldn't do. But as mm -hmm. an example, I saved 30,000 hours of tester time on Diablo 3 console because I built custom hardware to allow us to do automation on the console itself. It was a yeah. bridge from the PC to the console that mimicked uh, inputs, the controller inputs, and they wouldn't allow me to use anything. So I'd use auto it to do it. But I actually wrote custom firmware to get that done in the first place and built the devices myself out of parts that I bought from China. So I still have those. They're called Bifrost because it's a bridge. So think about that on, I think at that time it was yeah. about $11 an hour, right? And they didn't even reimburse me for the parts. So I still got the damn things. So you look at something like that and you see, okay, yeah, let's just treat them like monkeys with keyboards. Let's pay yeah. them an unlivable wage. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Now, I'm the exception there. Not everybody was able to do those types of things. But you have people that are, they are so knowledgeable about the games. They know absolutely everything ins and outs for it to be able to test these types of things and report these critical issues and discern what is actually going on so the development, the d other development side can actually fix this. So yeah, QA is dev. And the best thing that I ever saw was when they started doing embedded QA, which I saw for, for uh, Overwatch 1. Yeah. Overwatch 1 was phenomenal for that because they had a development team and they had an embedded QA team and they were efficient as shit because of it. It was awesome. It was great to see. And I had hoped that that would spread out to the rest of the business, but it didn't. And a lot of it came down to fears that QA would, God, what, was the, what was the term? It was like a fraternize with the enemy kind of thing. Like they're going to abandon ship and join <laughs> development and all this. It was this weird military brochacho shit that made no sense. It was really, really strange. And I, 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 I will never understand. Fraternize or whatever. Yeah, that's the strangest word to describe. It was making really a weird. product good. <laughs> it was really, really weird, and it pissed me off like you wouldn't believe. And like, yeah. outside of that, there were also things like QA generally looks down on, right? Like down, yeah. on, like people look down on them. And at the time when I first started Blizzard, we had different colored badges for different teams. So Night Crew, we had brown badges. 
QA had yellow badges and everyone's like, oh, I got to get a yellow badge because it's like a status thing. If you don't have mm -hmm. a yellow badge, you're just like kind of worthless. And I remember talking to a guy who had a blue badge, which was development side. And he was talking to me. He was really interested in my ideas. And then he looked, I saw him look down, look at my yellow badge and disconnect the conversation. And that happened oh. a lot, dude. And it was literally just like this weird kind of like class-based badge environment. And to Blizzard's credit, they eventually did away with the different colored badges because it became very toxic. That kind of environment yeah. became super toxic, you know? It's and like it a was, brave new world almost. You're like, you're the beta yeah. class and this is the alpha class and you're just forever a beta yeah. because of it. Yep. And they eventually got rid of that system. They switched over to blue badges, but I had to, I had to live through that. Right. And I know a lot of other people did too. And it was, that stuff sucks, man. Like that stuff sticks yeah. with you. And it, it stuck with me, and it, it, it's the reason that I run my indie studio in the way that I do, is to make sure that this kind of shit never happens to the people who work for me, ever. And I have, I have kept to that every single step of the way. So let me ask it's, you a question. It's taught me what not to do, you know? Since you saw the, I mean, obviously you see that everyone should see the value of QA, right? There's oh, yeah. no amount of automation, blah, 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 that you can really replace QA with, right? It's very, no, very no, important no. to have that. But... You obviously had you, – you were very technical to begin with. You were able to make these things, which a lot of people, even today, even in my chat, even in your chat that are all developers, that would find it extremely difficult to do, building firmware, making these auto clicks, saving yeah. all this time. Do you make room? Do you allow paths? Do you, uh, like, encourage QA that you have today to also wear the mantle of a dev but in the, uh, in the realm of automation? They should, You, yeah. like, give them the working and, and, and space to do that. Yeah, if I had if I had more people on here, if I if I had a need of more like of QA to do that, I would absolutely do it. There'd be no reason not to invest in those people because I, I'll give you the best option for this. And this is gonna be kind of a weird call out. Amazon Game Studios was the best place I ever worked for for anything related to that because they really? have a, they have a really good structure for QA for their for Amazon Game Studios. So like at Blizzard, the way that it worked is you could become a QA, and then once you got to a certain part of your career, you had two options: become a manager or become a producer. There was no path forward for QA. If you were an amazing tester, you suddenly had to be a manager. You needed people skills. What if they don't have people skills? What if they're just a really good QA person? What if they're just amazing at testing and building test plans and, and doing that, right? There's yeah. no route. So you lose that asset into a role that they probably aren't going to be as good at. And also they have to do it because they want more pay. That doesn't make any sense. So Amazon Game Studios, they structured it differently for you could basically stay QA your entire career. And those jobs ended out at like a quarter million dollars, man. Like they were not like small nice. chump change kind of QA jobs. They were big deal QA jobs for that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's, it was huge. So I saw that and I was like, what I, what I realized then was I don't want to work for a AAA game company. I want to work for a company that owns a AAA game company. Yes. And it showed me very quickly, like this works because Amazon is a business and they own a game company. Yes. And that's my hope was with the acquisition of Blizzard that we'd see the same from Microsoft because now they're under the same kind of situation and their first action was to fire 1,900 people. And I, <laughs> it just devastates me, dude. Like, because yeah. you're not going to get that talent back. A lot of the people that got fired, man, they're all over my Facebook. They're people that have been there 10 plus years. Buddies of mine that have been there like 13, 15 years got fired in that wave. Where are you going to get that talent back? You're not. Yeah. That kind That's of such a brain drain that you cannot re, you can't redo. And the, the worst part is that Blizzard- You'll never get it back. Yeah. It was magic 15 years ago. That was like kind of, in my in my head personally, that's where like the magic was coming to an end as far as like my love for their games. It's kind of gone down since then. But yeah. it's just like you're losing that that group with whom had the magic still. Yeah. And it's that's, it's it's so devastating because I, I can understand. Oh, we look at it as a business, right? We look at it as a cost. Yeah. Games don't work that way. Games. You have a name of a you bought a name, Microsoft. You bought a name. Yeah. And then you fired the reason that name was special. And that's yeah. that's not coming back, man. Like, you can't get it back. And that's that's why you see so many of these other studios. Like, if you look at, um, you know, remember when Hearthstone launched? Nation, like, massive sensation, right? Did yeah. amazing. Yeah. reason it was doing so well is Ben Brode was the game director for that game. He loves card games. He's so invested in that. He wanted, he wanted it to be all as amazing as he possibly can. He built the best team for it. Awesome people that all love card games, right? When he left Blizzard, he went off to go make his own company called Second Dinner. Second Dinner's first game, Marvel Snap. That's why yeah. Marvel Snap exploded and did so well, because he loves card games. And now Hearthstone is in a state where a lot of people don't really enjoy it, right? And it's, it yeah. shows very quickly that when that, that passion leaves, you still got the name, but you don't got the game. And that's... Yeah, well, I mean 
Rough, you saw dude. that when they had uh, Di- the Diablo 4. They had the devs on there, and they couldn't even really play the game well. You could see yep. that they're disconnected from it. And you can also see that with Elden Ring. Elden Ring is created by a guy who wanted to create a game that he would love. And, yep. like, that's it. Like, that is that is Elden Ring is the game he always wish he had. You yep. know, or, it, I mean, technically it's Dark Souls. But, you know, like, go all the way back. But that's why those games do so well is it's because it's created by someone who loves the thing itself. They don't, they don't, they're not there to make profit. They're there to make the thing they've always loved. And, and profit usually follows when you make a really good game. But it still, does. there's, that, there's that, magic that, there that you off. can't get back. Yeah. There's, there's two things that I always – or there's three things that I always say pay off. Being passionate about the thing that you're working on. Treating your community and your customers with respect because they they matter more than anything, more than anything yeah. else. They, you support them, they're going to support you. And treating your employees the same. If if you do those things, it's very hard to lose. It is incredibly difficult to lose. You still could, but it's yeah. much harder. You know? I mean, you, there's always a loser in life, no matter how well they're set up. But yeah, you're you're right. Like if you have people bought in, you have customers that are excited. I don't I don't see how you can lose, honestly. It'd be yeah. crazy yeah. for you to lose at that point. It's difficult. Oh god, Bezos is here. The ad break. No. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. You usually you usually take a little moment to do any sort of ad break. I I can we can wait for a quick second and not yeah. let anything. Yeah, do you, you want see- to read these tweets? Uh or the read through the sweet line? And do you do you want to go through that yeah, or sure. I, okay, I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. I didn't realize you were str- I mean, I know you stream most of these days. Good. I just don't know which days you stream these days. Yeah, you're good. We'll wait for the Bezos and then we'll go through it. Because I, I haven't read through all of this guy's stuff yet. I've read through a number of it. And I was like, this is rough, dude. Because, like, I get it. And I saw it. And I experienced the same stuff. So I am yeah. unsurprised. I, well, I, I've seen this gay fake promotion. And then hearing you getting the old daytime shift. Learning that you, you know, quote unquote, got a time promotion. But then lost yep. the money. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's 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 rough, man. And that wasn't the only bad experience I had there. It was enough that like I eventually left and I didn't want yeah. to leave. Even though I found out I was paid 36% of industry standard. Even though you know like it even though the conditions were terrible, I didn't want to leave. I had yeah. to. And yeah. that's a very awful kind of a thing, you know. I do want to highlight one quick thing though that you said, which is really really funny. In the dev world, one of the worst companies you can work at is Amazon, yeah. which is which which that's interesting. I think goes to show how bad. At least this is my perception. I could be wrong, but how bad the gaming industry is is that in the web dev world, the worst place you can go is Amazon, and your best experience was at Amazon. Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> like, there's like there's so, there's like definitely a disconnect. It could be you know you know how there's local. There's like a local vertical. Sometimes they're much better than like say the company at a whole. So that's like a real. You know, that, that could happen, but it's also just funny that that exists. There's a reason for this, though. I, I got eight seconds left on ads, and then I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, waiting on it. All right, there we go. Bezos has receded. So, yeah, the, um, the reason why I had such a good experience at Amazon Game Studio was actually because most of them were former Blizzard. A large amount of that team was. It was people, we, we joked it was Blizzard refugees, man. So a lot of people yeah. have left Blizzard because Amazon Game Studio is four minutes away it, by car. It's like right <laughs> oh, there next to the Irvine yeah, that, campus. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that's a great that's so, a great change. Yeah, so we all left and we got like way more money. But I remember the reason why I had such a good time is my boss was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And in the first month that I was there, I went to him and I was like, hey, I don't think I'm doing a good job. Like I need to have a talk with you. I don't I don't think that I'm, you know, excelling in the, in the things I'm doing. I don't, I don't think I'm doing very well. And he said, go home. And take a like take tomorrow off as well. It was Thursday. He said, "Take tomorrow off as well. You're going to get a four day weekend, and you're not. It's not coming out of your PTO." And I was like, "What's going on?" And he said, "You were so overworked at Blizzard that you don't know what it's like to work a normal job. You're not used to a normal human pace, so you think you're underperforming. You need to reset." And he was a hundred percent right, and he knew because he was also former Blizzard, and it changed everything for me, man absolutely everything it reset everything for me and i was able to go back into the workforce and actually kick some ass and not worry about that because he was right dead right dang because it's an awful environment man that's it's so wild to think about how much influence a good manager has and how hard it is to realize how much influence a bad manager has oh yeah you know it's 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 funny that that you you would think they're both equally obvious but it's it's clear they're not equally obvious no it 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 hit me really hard. And like, 
I think that that kind of set me up for success there. And I was able to like go forward and be like, no, I'm doing good stuff. And I was able to focus on doing the work instead of doing the job, which is like, to me, a very different thing. The work and the job are generally yeah. very different. So yeah, no, it was great. It actually was awesome from there. I'm talking to Primogen, by the way. The Primogen. By the way, are you, going to, are you going to the Stream Rewards? Are you doing it? Dude, dude who's, did you not look at the seating arrangement? I did look at the seating arrangement. I want to yeah. make sure you're showing up. Yeah. You know? Who, who's, who's rubbing shoulder to shoulder at the there? You're going you're gonna to be able to see me shit my pants live, I, like within I, a five, five feet away. You know? I, not even. <laughs> I, I will be able to pat your back as you, as you shat your pants. I'll be like, good job. You got this. There's two ways that I shit my pants at the Stream Rewards. Either I win and I go up on stage, I trip, shit my pants, and cry. Right. Yep. That's that's one way. Or I don't win, but I'm standing up because I think I'm about to win and the light goes <laughs> over me to someone else. And then I shit my pants and cry while standing there. There's two <laughs> ways that this happens. Right. There's no other way around it, frankly. The spotlight hits you. You stand yep. up and then it goes to Doug Doug and you're like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I actually I was on Doug's stream the other day and I, I messaged him on, on his chat and I said, I hope you win so that I don't have to go on stage and shit my pants and cry. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, worst of luck to you. I I, I wish you the worst then. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's, too late. Right. it's too late to unvote me. So it's, you know, if it happens, yeah. it happens. It happens. Well, I hope you prepare. I, you know what the best part about doing any of these kind of awards things are? Is you have to go on stage. You It has to look low effort and you have to be funny and spon spontaneity, you know, a lot of spontaneity going on. Yeah. But you have to pre-plan all of that. So, so let's, good let's luck. See this, good luck on yeah. that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's going to be great. I'm just going to wing it. It's going to yeah. go up. If it happens, I'm just going to wing it. I'll be like, hello, I, you know, you know, that'll happen and it'll be great. <laughs> at least be you have a lot of practice fail. talking, you know, at least, I mean, words will come out now, whether they're coherent and well thought through, probably not, but at least words will come out. They will. It'll, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> I hope it's words. <laughs> All right. Shall we, shall uh, we read this? Cause yeah. I haven't read this yet. You want to read this? Yeah, I'll read it. So you said, okay. so enough time has passed now. For me to talk about why I decided to leave Blizzard, a mixed year with great teammates, but a management that mistreated, lied to me, gaslit me, gave me a, a fake promotion, an HR that refused to help. Buckle up, friendos. So this is going to be rough. Oh, by the way, that whole thing of there and HR that refused to help, HR is not there for you. HR is there to protect the company. Never forget that. That is, is that true that is, universally? Because that's been my yeah, experience universally has been HR is yeah. there to protect the company, never HR to help HR is there you. to protect the company from you. That is how that works. Yeah, 100%. Okay. I want, to, I want to start by saying that all of the people I got to work with on Team 4, Overwatch 2, were, were incredible. I can agree with that. Over, like, Team 4 is awesome. 100%. They were warm, welcoming, fun, and friendly, and so goddamn talented. There were so many great people on my team championing for me, and I'm grateful for their support. Unfortunately, however, I spent most of the year stressed out of my mind, working for four people's jobs at once. Yeah and having management make promises they had no intention of fulfilling, and I ultimately felt like I had no choice but to leave for my own mental health. Yep. In Crazy. July 2023, I was invited to a meeting by art leadership and production to let me know they were interested in promoting me to lead VFX artists of the cosmetics team, skins, emotes, POTGs, etc. So plays of the game. I had only been there for six months and told them basically, if you're sure, lol. <laughs> and yeah, that's a, that's a fair assumption at that point. It's yeah. like, I've only been here six months. Why are you giving me so much, you know, permission? Like, what's happening here, right? I'd yeah. be wary of that as well. Said, so, but before accepting, I was adamant that we were all on the same page about the full role, what it meant, what I would be doing, and also what the promotion would come with, pay increase, title changes, and confirmed all of those details before going further. These conversations included other lead VFX, art directors, associate art directors, production directors, and also HR, and we were all, all happy and I started the job effective immediately with the details to come at the end of the week in writing. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm, no. No, you don't do that. You So there is a very similar situation that happened with me when I was in IT on a, a senior red team position. They wanted me to move over to a new job that was dealing with specifically finding all the botters because I was very good at it, and they refused to give me any of the information about the pay or the role until I started the position. And none yeah. of it was in writing yet, and I left instead. And the reason I did is because the moment you start that position without it in writing, they can construe that as maybe you've accepted the position already and you're just accepting all of the terms and there's all this other kind of weird bullshit. And then it turns into a legal battle. It turns into a problem with that. So yeah. I said, no, instead, 
I have all of my paid time off saved, saved up, which I had the maximum, and I cashed that shit out at my yeah. current rate, which was a much higher rate, mostly because I had friends in payroll and I asked them what the job was going to be, and it was a lot less, even though the, my, my manager wouldn't tell me. Ooh. Really? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's wild they tried to give you a downgrade. Like I, I yeah, don't I really did. often hear about downgrades. That's kind of wild. I've had a very similar thing because I worked my previous company before my current one. Uh, it was, I would say it's akin to a uh, game stuff because i was working uh somewhere between 60 to 100 hours a week like every week i'd yeah. work 14 hour days just non-stop uh Feel it. dude it, it, it was a it was a rough time it was a rough time me and my wife were first year married and i'm working every hour of of the day every day and i remember during that time you know i was oh yeah you're now team lead you're now doing this you're now doing this and you know there was no change and then yep. finally, I was just like, okay, this is getting kind of weird. You know, I've been doing this nonstop, and I'm getting absolutely nothing from this. And so when I finally was like, by the way, I'm leaving. I'm going to Netflix. They're like, oh, no, no. How, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's like get you your pay up. Let's do all these things. I'm like, no, 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 no. I know how this works. Like, that's, 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 not, that's not working because you didn't do it to begin with. It doesn't yep. mean you're going to keep on doing it going forward. You're not, you're, you, you weren't honest now. to begin with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. It was like all my... Because I'm a hacker, right? I've been a hack. I've been a hacker for like 20 years, and you, you start to get you get a lot of bullshit detector when you're a social engineer. And like part of my my big part of my job is being a social engineer, right? So like yeah. my bullshit detector was going off the charts. I was like, dude, no, this is this this is one of those like fight or flight responses where it's like I know they're ripping me off. I need to reach out to my contacts. I reached out to my contacts. I found out they were ripping me off, and I was like, nope, we're gonna screw you right back and leave, and just did it, and just did it, you know. And I didn't actually have the job in Amazon lined up for that. So I took that paid time off money, which was paid at the full rate because I hadn't nice. gotten the other role yet. And I, I used that as runway to go get the, the job at Amazon while I was sitting That's at awesome. home. Yep. So did you, you pre-know you wanted Amazon or did you actually leave the job going, I don't know what to do? And then Amazon just like fell into your lap. I, I left the job saying the best option because I, I never anticipated leaving Blizzard. I never wanted to. I, yeah. I, at that time in my life, I didn't have my resume and my cover letter on the market, which, by the way, you always should. If you're yeah. in tech... Always have your resume and cover letter in the market. Always be shopping, no matter what. And I learned that. My general that in that rule of thumb is that if they message you personally, yep. I almost always take an interview. If yep. I get some spam kind of marketing, like you can tell, and sometimes it even comes with underscores and stuff where they meant to put your name in, like then I then at that point I won't do it. But if someone sends me a personal letter, I will minimally give them a thirty minute chat about the job. That's like yep. my general rule of thumb. Yeah, I I don't do that now, but I used to do that. That like when I was still on the market doing that kind of stuff, but now it's like I'm running a thing, so like I don't want to stop doing that. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you, there, is there any job someone could offer you that you would want to stop running your own thing that's successful to go run someone else's thing? Right? I don't, I don't know if that's no. And it, the reason why it'd be no isn't isn't like for me because maybe I could get better whatever you know at another place, yeah. but that would it's be letting down every. Well, it's not even just that; it'd be letting down every person who works for me. Yeah, and I, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to ever do that. Like I don't. What you know, an incremental increase for me, but devastating for every other person that relies on me. What's the point of that? Nothing. You know, it's the that would be awful. And no, no, not even not even close. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, stuck I, with you I guys totally forever. Feel that. And, yeah. and that's the thing is that as you build out what you're doing, the, you get to be that manager that you didn't have. You get to be the team lead that people didn't have. You get to yeah. have all of that stuff, and you get to be that guy. And so you get to you know pull a bunch of people out of something. And so it's like, how do you ever? How do you replace that? Yeah, you can't. And I, that's actually, I've implemented a couple of things that I've seen that I saw at Blizzard that did work. Like we had this thing called Email Mike, where if the system completely failed you, you could actually send an email to Mike Morheim as any employee in any position anywhere in the company, totally discreetly. What, what, what is, who's Mike? Who's Mike? What is his position? Mike Morheim. He's one of the founders of Blizzard. He's CEO, man. Yeah, well, you got to say those. Be, not everybody knows you don't know who Mike Morheim is. Oh, my I said God, not man. everybody. Okay, my goodness. Come on, Thor. You think everybody in your chat knew who he was? I bet you there's one person who refuses to say that they don't. That's true. <laughs> they're just, they're just like, Mike. oh, yeah, totally Mike. Yeah, so That's come fine. on, co-founder, no, yeah, what Mike, are you, loser? <laughs> Mike Morham is one of the founders of Blizzard. So he's CEO, um, and he cares very passionately about the company. Very, very yeah. much so. And so he had a thing called Email Mike, where you could send an email at any time to him, no matter what position you were in the company. You could be CS. You could be a janitor. It doesn't matter, right? And he would he would accept your email, and he would talk to you. And he did it all the time. 
And if it was very nice. serious, he would handle it. And he, he, I had to send one of those at one point and he did handle it. Right. So like those types of things do happen. And so I implemented the same thing in our studio where I have a ticket system that an, any employee of mine can go and send in a ticket directly to me, goes to nobody else. It's just me and them. And that's totally fine. You know, and I, I want to have things like that, that I knew worked even at that kind of crazy scale, very massive company, you know, that, that's respectable. And, and put that we have there. something similar at Netflix where we have something called the open Q and a, which is a Google mm -hmm. doc. And you get to ask your, you get to ask a question. And then one of the C suite or sometimes a VP, like one, someone really high up in that's particular to that specific strategy that you're asking about will write a response. And then the history goes on forever. So we have like open Q and a for the last five years, all the doc questions ever asked all that all there. So every, you know, and if you just don't understand something or you want to say, why aren't we doing this or what, you know, why does this happen? You will get yeah. an answer. It's pretty, it's, it's I, a good, it's a good system. I have a horrifying story for you in that line. <laughs> Let's hear it. So Blizzard used to do the same thing at like Christmas parties and stuff like that. They do these Q and A sessions and sometimes they do these big meetings where they'd get like a, like a big hall and everyone would be in there and we'd all be talking and you could go up in front of everyone with a microphone and ask questions. Right. <laughs> and I love, I love where this yeah, is going. It, it's just like an open mic thing. And so they were having we were having all this this internal discussion about here's the storm because here's the storm was built on the same stuff as starcraft 2 and as such it was just as uniquely vulnerable to map hacks it was exactly the same vulnerability in fact you could take a map hack for starcraft 2 right off the market change the memory address locations that it would point to and you had a working map hack for here's the storm and if you don't know what a map hack is it shows where all of the opponents are on the map even if you're not allowed to see those opponents which gave you a significant advantage. Think League of Legends, but you can see the whole map at the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Awful, right? Horrible. So w internally, the security team and the risk team, I was part of the security team at the time, the risk team, we, we told them, like, you need to fix this before this goes live because you want this to be an eSport. This can't be an eSport if you do this. Yeah. It's impossible, yeah. right? And they were like, no, 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 no. You don't know what you're talking about, all this kind of stuff. They didn't fix it. And it, it, was, it was bad, dude. Like, it was really bad. So during one of those meetings, one of these dudes comes up and he asks the question, he goes, well, what are you guys going to be doing about map hacks? And one of the C-suite guys, real smugly, I don't remember which one of those, he goes, well, that's what we have a risk team for. And the, the guy said, well, I am the risk team. So what are you going to do about it? And the room just just ate it, dude. Like it was so, because the guy who walked up was a risk team member. And the, the only solution to that problem is you have to wait for a player to report somebody else that has cheated at the game. And then you have to manually review that game to see if he reacted to something in Fog of War. There's no yeah. other way to detect it. It's horrific. Which is why if you look in StarCraft at the ends of the seasons, right, you have all these names that are like barcode names and they don't get banned till the end of the season. That's why. Because it's manual. It's awful. Ah, yeah, that's, There's yeah, that's, nothing that's, else you could do with that. Because they're not out of process out. map hacks. <laughs> yeah, they're out of process map hacks. There's nothing you can do for detection on that. Dang. And why is it even possible? Because they stored all of the location data for all the units on all of the clients, even though they were in fog of war. But, uh, you know, not a, not a great way to do it. That doesn't even sound like that hard of a problem. I mean, you, you already are sending down the data probably with TLS, you know, encrypted and all that. So it's not like they can view the, the network packets. So it's just really down. It's just really down to like, don't store things that aren't in memory yet. <laughs> the, the problem is, is you, you have to remember brokering servers. It's run on brokering servers, which means all of that data is on every one of the clients, man. That's Dang. it. It doesn't, it doesn't hold anything on the server itself. It holds it all inside of the clients. The brokering servers just transmit the data. And that's it. So F. <laughs> it's, yeah, F's in the chat. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? So a brokering server in this situation doesn't actually store any of the data on itself. It just transmits the data between the different clients. The clients are always aware of where all those units are, and they have to be based on that infrastructure. The only way to try and build, like fix that is to try and do a client server model. Where the server holds all of that data, and the client is just kind of a dummy, right? Which is how League of Legends does it, which is why you can't use map hacks in League of Legends. There might be a small buffer zone around the fog of war area where you can't yeah. see units, where it is still technically in memory so that they can cache it so when a unit walks out of fog of war they don't pop into existence Agreed. yeah so yeah. that's pretty normal that's what i would assume so that way like if you did get to cheat you could only cheat like four feet in front of you you couldn't cheat yep. the entire map and it's just like ah yeah, yeah. well i mean an advantage but any player with skill would d dominate the player without skill, right? We could all go, okay, yeah, 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 yeah we get that. And, and and someone actually brought up that sounds like peer-to-peer. -peer. It basically is, but it's obfuscating everyone's IP addresses because the brokering server stops your IP address from leaking to the other players. It's that, effectively the same model, but with the brokering server in place. Yeah, that's why whenever you play StarCraft Two and one person disconnects and then the whole game gets all crap, you know, gets all crazy, it's because there's yeah. that that situation going on. Yeah. All right, you want to keep on reading? Let's let's hear about let's yeah. hear more about this. Let's. 
Let's go. So these conversations included other lead VFX, art directors, associate art directors, production directors, and also HR, given the all happy. So we talked about that. The new role was all of my existing responsibilities and workload as a senior, becoming a line manager of three people immediately, managing What's our entire... What's a line entire... manager, just so we understand what a line... Because I actually don't... I only understand that in terms of restaurants, so I don't... So it... I don't know what a line manager is. I've never heard that term inside <laughs> the gaming industry. So my guess is that he was a manager for three people. Like, uh, uh, maybe that's what they're using supervisor for. Because in, in, in the teams that I was on, we had a thing called a supervisor. And a supervisor was like a baby manager that was like a manager <laughs> to like three to five people. So maybe that's what that is. Such yeah, you, you get direct reports as a supervisor. We called it a supervisor. So I guess his was, was just the line manager was his okay. position. for. okay. Yeah, like kind of like a team lead, but not not paying you like a team lead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Managing our entire outsourced VFX pipeline in China. That's a rough. That's a rough yeah. one. That's a that's a team job. That's frankly. nighttime. Yeah, that's a yeah. nighttime job, too. Yep. Because you're you're going to be at the wrong wrong side of the world for that. <laughs> Perfect. In time fact. <laughs> yep. So plus additional lead things, planning much, much more meetings. Friday of the past week comes. Nothing but the production director does announce my promotion to lead to the whole team on the Thursday. It's official. It's happening. The whole team knows. I even tweet about it because I'm so excited. We're all Gucci. So he actually tweets it out here and he says, oh, they sent an email about working, um, like, my, announcing my promotion. He's so excited about it, right? said, on my first week as lead, my new manager tells me that we are going to have to fire one of my new reports because he won't RTO. RTO means real-time officer? RTO. I don't remember these damn terms. I've been out of pocket for so long. Return to office policy. That's what it is. Oh, so that, yeah, 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 yeah. Return to office. So when you're, I, I guess during the pandemic, everybody went to go do that. And this guy doesn't want to return to the office. He want to work from home, you know, wants to keep working from home. He won't RTO, he won't return to office, fire him. This happened to a lot of people. So yeah, I yeah. hate acronyms, by the way. So he said, me... He's waiting for medical accommodation because he is a carer for his parents. Mm. Them, yeah, laughing. We're not going to do that for a junior. Ooh. That is a lot more normal than you think. And I hate it. I hate it a lot. Like, is it just yeah. the, so, it, so do, is there really like a culture of, of um, like looking down on every experience rung? Yes. That is, is that exactly why there's so the, many titles like assistant director or yeah. uh, associate yeah. director versus a director versus a team lead versus a, a supervisor versus a manager? The way that I felt about it is high school never ends, man. And it was like that through most of my career there. It felt like I was working a lot of the times it felt like it, not every team, mind you. Yeah. But a lot of times it felt like I was working with a bunch of people in high school and there were a lot of clicks. There were a lot of bullshit. There was a lot of looking down on other teams. There was a lot of group group culture kind of shit and then i went to amazon game studio and that was all gone and i was in a room with a bunch of adults and it was night and day man like so night can and i day. ask you a quick question uh because sure. this, this mike fella sounds like he, he he didn't really i guess subscribe to that kind of model and he was one of the yeah. founder slash ceo yeah. then how does that type of culture bloom if you have somebody that is opposed to it so high up like, was he just because not firing the people high enough up to, like, prevent that? Yeah. Because culture flows so, downwards, right? It, it, it can. It, once you get to too large of a structure, it creates these festering pockets, right? Yeah. So what ended up happening in this case, and I remember remember when, when Blizzard got sued by the state of California? For all I the, don't the remember. Wrong They've been sued a lot of times. I, but uh, yeah. was this the they one with sued, all the marches but, and everything? And there's, I think yeah, it was, yeah. like, something yeah. with sexism. Was that, was that what it was? All I of that stuff. And it, it was bad, dude. Like yeah. it was really bad. There was a lot of horrible stuff that went on. It was awful. When that happened, I'm actually in a, a Facebook group called Blizzard Alumni, which is all the old, you know, people who used to work at Blizzard. And Mike and, and his wife actually wrote like a big uh, email to everybody, like a big message to everybody apologizing to all of them because he didn't know. A lot of the mis mm. like, you know, wrongdoings that were going on, he was insulated from because middle management would trap it in there. And yeah. I saw the exact same thing when I tried to report things up that were awful. And I eventually had to do an email mic. And when I did an email mic, it was handled in 24 hours when I had been waiting weeks before that. And they'd gum it up in middle management to protect people that are, you know, inside of their group. So you get these bad little pockets where not everybody's bad, but this pocket is bad and it festers. And it insulates it, yeah. And, and then it, you and have this buffer zone yep. where the, the person upper can't even hear it or yep. see it because it's fog of war. You have fog of war and yep. they don't have they don't have map hacks. Yep. That's exactly what it is, man. And it's it's really devastating to think about. And there's 
the, what I learned from that and why I run my studio the way I do, I run my studio like a and d team, three to five people. That's the development team. If, yeah. it's in, if it's the right size for a Dungeons & Dragons team, you don't have miscommunication. You can all sit at the table Agreed. together. The whole team that's working on whatever it is you're working on, you can sit together and work on a game together. And that's it. Because once you start expanding beyond that, these types of things can happen. Doesn't mean they will, but they can. And you need to have a lot of other checks and balances in places to stop these sort of festering hives from growing, right? Let me ask you a quick question. Were the VPs, like, I think a very healthy thing that you can see in orgs is that VPs and, like, super high up people meet with individual contributors, like, once a month or once a quarter, right? So there's this kind of reaching down that reaches across the, uh, the, if you will, the blood barrier to go into an area in which they don't get insight into. Uh, was that, that happening at Blizzard where, where yeah. people higher up were crossing boundaries? So Mike did that. Mike Morheim would do that. Yeah. So what he would Obviously do is he Mike would, did that. He was yeah. good at that. But anyone he else? He would do things. No, no, no. He, he did this thing called CS for a day or QA for a day. And he would actually go down in the trenches and do their job for like 24 to 72 hours and just fix everything. And like he'd be like, why? This doesn't make any sense. Fix this. And it would be things that like CS would be complaining about for like nine months, 10 months. And it, it got fixed in a day because Mike Morheim stepped down and, and did their job for a day and was like, this is inefficient and stupid. Stop it. You know, and I'm it, just shocked that he, he didn't he was know the only any one of these things it. going wrong. Like, how? it's hard, man. You got a 5000 person yeah. company. Yeah, you can't fair. see every piece of that. You know, and it's even even building a corp now for myself. There are little pieces that happen in our dis- our discord's got 77000 people in it. Right. Massive community. <laughs> there are moderation actions that go on every day that I know nothing of because yeah, I'm on stream fair. all day. Like I'm running the stream and the mods handle it. And we talk about some of them later if they're egregious enough, but some of them, they're the only ones who see it, you know? And like, that's kind of how that goes. Eventually that can spiral out of control. You know, it can turn into a situation where maybe one of those mods is cherry picking or allowing toxicity to fester or covering for some people, right? Which is why we have a system in place where any moderator can send me a ticket so I can fix it. If there is a problem like that, I can go and do the investigation and we can handle it, right? So, like, as your structure grows, you have to put these checks and balances in place. But the larger it grows, the more blind spots you have. And that's, I think that's really what affected Blizzard the most in that regard. And it sucks, but large org, man. The only other way to fix this is you got to have a lot of oversight, ton of oversight. Yeah, and and Discord is, well, I mean, your problem is uniquely challenging because everyone there is effectively volunteers, right? At Blizzard, everyone there was, well, I mean, in the sense that... Oh. Yeah. You're 77,000 people there. Those are all people who just want to be, they're interested in what you're doing. And I'm sure, you know, sure. You've, you must have a small set that you're actually working with day to day that are paid. But, you know, a large yeah. portion are just people there because they're interested. And so how, like, at Blizzard, though, every person there theoretically was paid, I assume, whether it oh, yeah. wasn't that good, but they were still paid nonetheless. Unless you're so like an unpaid intern or something weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, unless there's something truly messed up. But you, you'd think, like, that feels easier to manage than Discord. Discord is just a Wild West. Uh, you know, half the time it is the Wild West. I have to rely on people just to make a good calls because you can't, like, yeah. just because there's there's no pre-screening for you to enter yeah. into the Discord. So that requires a lot of just, like, you have to trust people it, to make it, good decisions. Whereas, like, like a company, you door, have, you you know, have the, the pre-screening. Internet. Yeah. That's yeah. what just makes it that's, – that's where I – I, you're you're probably right, like in the sense that I think everyone looks at a problem that's difficult, and if you've never really thought about it and lived it for the first time, it feels simple and obvious to fix. Yeah. And I'm sure, like in the actual practical application, it's 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 damn near impossible. And Mike probably truly just didn't actually have control or even have the ability to make to affect the change. Yeah. And I still, I mean, I still even when I whenever I hear that, I still think about this. Call me crazy, but it just feels like if I were in that position. I would have to say, okay, I can't affect change. This is clearly continuously going wrong. The only way to fix this is that I have to do like a mass middle management layoff. Like even all the good ones, like I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a a dick, but something's wrong. And there's some broken thing in here. We have to, we have to try, we have to try something different. I think there's a better way. And I think the better way is to hire, hire an outside team to do investigations inside the company discreetly. That's how you'd have to do it. Oh, some sort of like almost like some sort of hacking, like offensive hacking, but it's offensive HR. Yep. You'd have to you'd have to hire an outside company to do investigations within the company. That's the it's an ex- external audit. So they have no ties to anyone inside of the company. They have no bias in that regard. And then you do that. That's the only thing that you can possibly do. It, would it be effective? Maybe. But that's that w- would be the only effective thing at that point. 
Dude, and that's I think such they a did great idea, but so hard. How would you get – because you'd have to get people organically placed in higher positions throughout the company that are under co- – like this is like this is like double agent stuff you got I going should. on here. Well, I mean think about it this way, right? Like uh, ju- just think about like Amazon, the way that Amazon is structured. There was no bullshit there. There was no drama that I saw, right? Yeah. And I was there for a while. I was there for over a year and didn't see even a lick of that, right? But I'll tell you one thing. Their security systems were fantastic. If you went to your Mm. desk without badging in, if you tailgated someone, a member of the security team would be at you in 30 seconds every time. And they'd be like, you need to get up out of your desk and go badge in right now. I have never seen that anywhere else. And that shows me a company that is like properly set up. So if they have that level of physical security in place at all hours of the day, all the time, they likely have other set layers of security in place. It's not a mom and pop shop. It's not a massive company run, you know, like that. It's not... It's yeah. it's actually a company. Okay, fair. All right, let's let's we we can we we can move on to this uh this uh, this next one. Okay, it's yeah. wild. So, it's wild though. I I could keep talking about this forever. That's why I'm like, okay, we should probably yeah, yeah we keep could. going. So yeah. another lead on the team offers to deliver the news for me because it's my first week as lead, and the person we are supposed to fire is one of my closest friends on the team. <sighs> he is given until the end of the month to either relocate or leave. We're all distraught. I'm now doing my senior role my lead role, and now all of the work that this great VFX artist was doing. They then refused to hire on an intern, another one of my reports, who is incredibly talented and we all love, so I add the work they were doing to my own plate. I got ads again. I'm going to wait. Okay. Oh, you got wait. ads. Okay, yeah, yeah. We can wait. Yeah, we can Jeff wait for Bezos jump scared, dude. dude. Uh, yeah, for those who don't know, I, I run ads oh, on my I stream. Ads too. I, I have yeah, ads, nice. too. Do you think they're Perfect. aligned? I don't know. Maybe. Are our cycles aligned Adeline. right now? I don't know. We are. We've crossed the stream, so it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. They just Discord unites us, even in ads. It's true. It's true. But yeah, I, I, when I run ads, I, I do breaks for everything. I, I put a big Jeff Bezos head on there. It's quite funny. Hey, by the way, uh, what, what day are you arriving for the stream rewards? I'll be there on Friday, I think around 1. I, I was going to come a day it's, early and leave a day late. I'm, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing it daily. So Friday is the 16th. Yeah, I'll be there. We should hang. Okay. Yeah. You, you, do you know Sushi Dragon? Dude, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Him and I were gonna do something. You wanna you wanna come crash the sushi dragon IRL stream and go eat sushi and hang that out. That sounds with him? cool as shit. Dude, his augmented stuff is crazy. It's, yeah, it's super crazy. We could we could do a pretty fun little thing. Yeah. No, I'm down. I'm super down. That'd be a lot of fun, man. Hell you know, yeah. he lives in Bozeman. He lives in Bozeman, my old my uh, my uh, uh, alma mater. That's where I, I grew know. up and stuff. Yeah. I grew up in God, I grew up in Orange County, but I grew up in like Tustin. That's kind of where I was at. What's Tustin? And then I moved weird you know mostly it's like irvine but with crime you know <laughs> oh fantastic that sounds like yeah. a good time it's right across the freeway you know where the crime happens the, the yeah. barrier there yeah dude is that not the weirdest thing that that does actually happen we had that in yeah. billings montana we there was a railroad and it was we yeah, actually barrier. had the wrong side of the tracks and one yeah. side was like clean and nice and the other side it was just like welcome to oakland right like it's just like you you cross that bridge and, or the the railroad track and it's immediately worse i had a shooting at my job yeah i was no, dude, a lifeguard i, I got I'm we had two girls watching a kiddie pool and uh you know i lived in i lived in i lived in montana so it's a different world and some people jumped the fence and beat up the girls and so they said, okay, from here on out, girls can't watch the kiddie pool by themselves. So I, someone has to go and watch the kiddie pool with them. And so they selected me. And I kid you not, this is the exact phrase. I'm not making it up. I'm not sugarcoating it or exaggerating it. My boss at the time, who worked for the state, pulled me aside, handed me a switchblade, very illegal, and said, if any Indians jump the fence, you got to stab them. What? Where? What kind that of was- madhouse did you live? <laughs> what? It, what? <laughs> That's what, that's what, that was my job when I was 18 years old, teaming with testosterone and a switchblade. Like hell yeah, we got switch. We're going, we're just going down. <laughs> Jeez, I'm amazed you survived. <laughs> I know. What kind of? It was the craziest kind of crazy part of my environment. Life. That is, that's yeah. nuts, man. Jesus. Anyways, sorry. Okay, we can, we can we can go I'm on. Totally now. just derailed now. Yeah, no, goddamn. <laughs> We can, still, we can talk more so about So he's doing that all this later. extra work now. Yeah. yeah. A month goes by, and I've now sent an email or uh, I've now sent an email or Slack message every other day to find out what's happening with the pay increase and title change. So his pay has not increased despite doing all this extra work. Yeah. His title has not changed despite it being announced. And he lost I'm a teammate, that, so he lost the intern. So he's actually doing even bonus work now. 
Yep. He says, I'm told it has to wait until August because that's when all the promotions happen. But don't worry, it's all happening. Oh, no. No, dude. No, dude. That is... Mm, that bothers the shit out of me. No, yeah. that's not good at all. That's really scary stuff. I then discovered that I am earning less than 50% of every other lead VFX artist at Blizzard. So much so that as a lead, my salary is lower than every person I am managing. I send more emails. I'm told it's because I'm in the UK, and my salary is based on market value, not my value. Oh, dude, dude. I, so I'm going to throw something out there, okay? Uh, I think that location-based pay is, is kind of, is, is, is kind of stupid. It's, yeah. It really bothers me. Like, I get a 5% uh, pay to, uh, decrease or a 15% pay decrease because I live in, in, in Rapid City, South Dakota. Right. Yeah, I'm. A, I like. I, I, it doesn't hurt me. Like I'm not like. Oh gosh, I, you know, I, it's the worst thing ever. But still, it's like it's. It's also super stupid. That being said, um, when I worked at Blizzard, I was a senior red team specialist, and I was paid thirty six percent of industry standard inside of my own area. So yeah, you you, you know, lived in California. You lived at the place, and you still yeah, got oh, crushed. The the job that I went on to after all of that was hacking power plants for the federal government. So it's not like I was lacking the ability. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you had the skills to pay the bills, yeah, but just a little bit. Yeah. They just they just wouldn't pay. You know, that was that was the whole point with it. Yeah. That was my that was my last job. Yeah, I was hacking power plants for the federal government. I worked for the DOE. I also have three black badges from DEF CON. I am a I'm a hacker. That is yeah. what I yeah, that's my career. Yeah, you, you actually hack. This isn't this yeah. isn't like fake hacking. You like you. Although somebody did say on Twitter that I was a hobbyist hacker in, in my earlier career, which was very funny to me. I was like, ah, yes, what a hobbyist, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess te technically you have to. It has to be a hobby for you to be that good. Also, it's not that's only true. just full time. It also has to be a hobby. So it is. I mean, arguably, technically correct, semantically correct, <laughs> but uh, kind of a dick move, you know? Like a little bit dick. Yeah, <laughs> a little dick right there. There we go. This is very funny. So another month passes, and I get, and August turns out to be no, no. It's actually September now, Ooh, for some reason. But don't worry, it's coming. It's definitely a promotion, and there's definitely a pay increase. I continue to be overworked and exhausted, but hopeful. Fool, fool. Mm. There it is. Hey, hey, to be fair yeah. though, the only place you don't have hope is hell, right? That's Dante's Inferno, right? Right above the oh. the, the the pathway to hell is abandon hope, all ye who enter, and so hope. Yeah. A good thing, though, can lead to this type of stuff. The problem is, is he's in a emotionally distraught state. He's, he's beat in, up from the work. He's not yeah. able to fight. So the only thing he has is, well, well, maybe it'll be okay. Maybe I'll just keep doing this. Maybe it's yeah. going to work out. I'm already in. I might as well go all yeah. in, right? And yeah. I had the exact same experience when I was at Blizzard. Oof. And I broke out of that because my bullshit detector went off too hard. Yeah. And that was it. And, Man, and I feel and, so bad for this guy. This is crazy. Yeah, it's the same. So like this is this echoes the shit out of what I went through. So I understand, and it's it's a pattern of of an issue with a lot of people there. So another few weeks pass, and it's getting to three months being a lead. So I send an email out to everyone: directors, VPs, HR, leads, you name it, telling them that if there is no written information by September first, I will stop doing the role immediately. Good Suddenly, job. people have something to say. This entire time, HR have not responded once, and they're finally reply inviting me for a quick call. Classic. It is this call, and HR asks me what promotion. I have no idea what you're talking about. At this point, I raised a formal complaint. I had months of messages, emails that I sent to HR explaining that I was talking about, and they finally reply with, you seem to be confused. There is no promotion. Leadership is a lateral move. It's just a change of responsibilities. There is no pay increase. Can we get I was a livid. quick TO? Can we get a quick timeout here? Yeah. Leadership is a lateral move? No, it's not. I mean, I, I, no, well, it's it's one. Okay, so l let me counter that. There is at least one counter that if you go from, say, principal engineer to director, one would argue you have a similar impact radius, and that's maybe a lateral move. There's uh, still a title change. But, yeah, but there's a title, the title change, change and a responsibility change and a work change. You know, one could argue it's a lateral move if you have the same impact. You just have an impact in an orthogonal way, if one could argue. But this does not sound like he was – he was not a principal – person going to a role of equivalent thing he was being promoted and gaining new things and now starting to manage people yep this, and, uh, this, this sounds like a, the craziest thing i've ever heard <laughs> the general standard of blizzard was monthly monthly reports with people too which means he had had three months of direct reports from people that he was managing and then he was told that he's not getting a pay increase for this in any way yeah after being told see here's the thing that i want to know right he was receiving these communications were those verbal communications or were those email communications 
Mm, yeah, yeah. Biggest, biggest email would be uh, email oh, and Slack. Biggest Slack is Audible or auditable. Yep. And so those, I mean, I, th I assume those would come with legal responsibilities versus verbal ones. I mean, you got the whole he said, she, she said yep. problem. Because he said, I had months of messages, emails that I sent to HR to explain what I was talking about. And they finally replied with all of this. He had months of messages that he sent to HR. Yeah. Who was sending him these messages under what communication style? Here's the biggest thing to you guys. Always get it in writing. Yeah. If it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. If they say something's going to happen, cool, so you say, cool, I'll do that once it's in writing. That's it. This is not happening until that's a contract. I won't do that work until it's on paper. That's it. Uh, the thing I, I like to practice personally, uh, a lot of times whenever there's kind of this type of talk that's happening, frequently, yeah. like, you know, because a lot of times there's just like informal talk about, hey, what's going on? Hey, would you like to look into this? Hey, would you like, you know, there, th that will yeah. always happen at some levels. And so frequently what, I, frequently what I'll do is right after that, I will follow up with the Slack message and being like, hey, you know, I, I do feel like this is a good move. Are you sure we want to move in this direction? You know, like I get them to agree in a more formal sense ever before yep. moving on just because, you know, not everything requires paper because some of it is just literal. Like I'm changing what I'm doing for these set of reasons, and I just want to make sure everyone knows that I'm doing this. But I always oh, yeah. try to make sure that there's a paper trail of some sort. Like this is why I've made all my decisions ever. Yeah, no, it's, it's super important to do that. It's always important to... Make sure that the other party is bought into the, the level that you can turn around and go, no, you said you'd do this. Here's the paper trail. Now what yeah. are you going to do? You know, yeah. And that's, that's it. Make, make a legal paper trail for yourself always. And I, I don't know if he did that here. It sounds like he didn't, right? So he said, I was livid naturally and asked that any normal, rational human would, uh, would quote, why would anybody want the promotion then? Which <laughs> yeah. obviously then did the old, I can see you're frustrated, and I can see how you misinterpreted this. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. If someone tells me I know how you feel, I see you're frustrated, I just nothing makes me want to, like, physically slap a person more. Like, that's like wanna, that's where, like, I cross that boundary, and I'm like, I'm too hot to even talk right now. When that happens, I just, and then you just back off. You're like, okay, there's, yeah. there's two options here. I cool off or I murder a person, right? And I don't want to murder a person because that sends you to jail, so I'm just going to stop. We're going to yeah. wait. Until I cool down for a second, and then I'm going to talk to you rationally and directly about how much I want you to shove your head up your ass. Like that's pretty much how that goes, right? It's it's this <laughs> it's the it's the modern empathy movement, right? They use all these words that sound like they care about you, but it's just like somehow yeah. so much worse. I'd rather have someone be like, "You didn't notice that idiot." I'd rather have you say that than be like, yeah. "Oh, I feel you." Oh man, yeah, know, I, under 100%, I understand. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know. You know, I, I feel I feel the way that you're feeling, and I totally understand what it is. Maybe we can circle back on this later. You know, I don't want to boil the ocean. It's a dead. You know, well, oh. <laughs> we talk about this in October. October is our month to talk about this. We'll yeah. come back to October it. October is the month to bring these things up. Yeah. <laughs> and then in October, it's like, you know, the new year is, is very close. So let's talk yeah. about it then. You know, after after the Christmas move, you know, all of the stuff yeah. in the holidays. Absolutely. Yeah, then we got Chinese every, New Year afterwards. So we got yeah, Chinese going, New Year. But... It's just a really tough time right now, you know. <laughs> It's a lot of things going on globally, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get in the way of that. You know, business management stuff. God, I hate it, dude. I, I know. I know it all. It, it, it bothers the hell out of me. I've, I've lived it. So the ingress, investigation from the formal complaint comes back after a few weeks, and after some careful deliberation, decides that HR did nothing wrong and followed all processes correctly. Really? So I hand in my resignation about an hour later, but it doesn't end there. Because no, HR then told me that because of my role as a lead, I had gained inexplicable knowledge that would put me on a business risk to work anywhere else. So they're activating a non-compete clause that restricts me from working anywhere at all for three months. And you may really? be rightfully thinking, oh, so this is a paid three months, right? You can't stop someone from working at all for three months without paying them. Incorrect. That is exactly that what like they extortion. did. sounds like extortion. Yep. That is exactly what they did and unfortunately completely legal because get screwed, I guess. And that's it. And yeah, yeah, hold on. That's the thing. Because he was in the UK, right? So he's in the UK. Yep. How did I didn't realize that the UK? I mean, that's, man, that's crazy that you can enact that and even across country boundaries like that's that. That's what I'm wondering. So I'm wondering at that point, I'd hire a lawyer. If I was in that type of a situation, I'd be like, you're doing what? Okay, you're going to talk to my legal team now. We'll see how this goes. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not well versed in EU law. One of my moderators is. He's actually a copyright lawyer in, in the UK. Okay. But like that seems wrong. And I would talk to a lawyer, right? 
My yeah. legal advice is never to give legal advice. I say talk to a lawyer. Talk to <laughs> that a, is that the seems best like a, legal advice yeah. ever is to go find yeah. someone that knows the law. <laughs> go talk to a lawyer. Yeah. Generally, yeah. my, my yeah, general rule is that if you, feel, if you feel like something's deeply wrong and you cannot explain anything other than it just seems like a massive human rights violation, go talk to a lawyer. Just, you just said, go. You say he can't afford a lawyer? No, you can. You'd be surprised because a lot of the times what you can do is you can talk to a lawyer under certain constraints of say like, hey, I, I'd like to talk to you about an issue and we can see if we can go from there. And a lot of those introductory things are either not very expensive or are free, depending on what's going on. And if it's a, a legal battle like this, there's a lot of laws in the UK that absolutely, absolutely cover your ass as a worker. Like... Europe does not yeah. screw around with that. The UK specifically doesn't screw around with that. So, and then on top of that, a lot of lawyers lawyer. will be glad they like large corporate, uh, like things like this are huge paychecks. And a lot of a lot of lawyers will go in and be like, "I take twenty percent. That's that." Right? Yep. I've seen a lot of people say, "I'll do it. I will just go through this because we're going to win this one." Yep, and we'll take a percentage of your gains, and that's yep. it. And you'll win something, and we'll win something, and everybody goes home happy. So there are situations like that, and you. You'd be surprised. There are even some that will do it pro bono. There's even um, like systems in place based on the country that you're in that may fight for you on behalf of the country and say you cannot treat our citizens this way. There's all kinds of stuff like that, man. So like there is never a time where you should be like, oh, I can't see a lawyer because I might not be rich enough to see it. No, talk to a lawyer. Find out yeah. for sure what your options are. Always. Because you have a three-month unpaid vacation at this point. So it, yep. it does sound like no matter what – yeah, things are already going to be bad enough. You should talk to a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone has continued so far, thank you for listening. So, oh, wait, here we go. I, I said I can't survive for three months without pay. I have a mortgage. And they looked at me in the eye and said, well, you probably shouldn't have signed the contract then. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> Within a few minutes, I was locked out of Slack email. And that was the end of my time at Blizzard. And yeah, that's exactly how that goes. They kick you right out. When I was in QA, we went through the first mass firing blizzard ever did called the Blizzard 600. And the way that it went down was horrific. When we were coming into the front doors, into the building, all the managers were there that morning. Everyone's like, what the hell is going on? And they directed you to the right or to the left. If you went to the right, you were going to HR and you were fired. If you went to the left, you were going to your desk. Problem with this, not only is it horrible to see this happening, right? There was a back door to the building that was used by like 50% of the staff. <laughs> so after all of this went on, the managers had to go around to people's desks and find the ones who had gone in from the back that were supposed to be fired and go pick them up from their desks in front of everyone. The rest of the team, about an hour later, uh, we asked the managers, hey, can we have the rest of the day off? This is horrific. And they said, no, we walked out anyway. Did, we did, did they at least give you, like, say, a task of 30 items to do and see who could leave the fastest? No, not that time. <laughs> that one was just fire everybody, like, with a shotgun, dude. Like, it was okay. it was just, like, random people on random teams. In fact, we were picking up work for people for, like, six months after that, finding tasks that, like, just disappeared. And yeah. it, it directly impacted the games, like, directly impacted that, because there was just shit that just didn't get picked up, because, like, a whole section of the team would be gone. All the people and their supervisor, just gone. So th who's going to know? Who's going to yeah, know about know. that, right? Yeah, so just, just people going, wait, what happened? Why? Yeah. I thought we were looking into this. So when these types of things happen, when they fire someone, they fire them. Just gone, you know, and wow. and it's devastating. It's 100% devastating. Wow. So let's see. I also want to sincerely thank everyone who purchased oh, a mentorship skip, session. One. One, one, oh, one? One, yeah, one oh, back. If anyone has continued so far, thank you for listening. I don't know what the point of this is, but I need to get off my chest. Blizzard had every opportunity to do the right thing, and they continually failed at that. And yeah, no, I I agree with this. The problem is, is once you start down the route of you have pissed off a clique, you've pissed off a group, you have bothered an in crowd inside of that environment, it all goes downhill from there. Yeah. Because those little festering groups network with each other in a way that you can no longer win. And when that happens, the only thing that matters is yourself and getting out of there and putting yourself in a, a proper position. And that's ex this kind of a thing is what was happening to me. So I bailed yeah. out before they could pull the trigger on me, before they could screw up my life. And I said, nope, uno reverso. Give me all my money. I'm out. And that's it. Dang. And I bailed. Yeah, I had, I, I mean, I luckily, I was on the other side of the click. I was on the good side at my the previous company, but I was still, even by management, getting... Getting blasted by stuff. Yeah, it, yep. was, not, it was not very great. But non nonetheless, it, I, the people on the other side of the click... And, you know, here's the, here's the hard part is when I was really young... I, I, you know, I, I definitely fell into the asshole range for sure. And, you know, I look back on a lot of mistakes I've made 
And I, you know, knowing what I know now, I wish I could talk to myself and and explain like wisdom. Uh, man, it's hard because I think when you when you're on the other side of things, it's not directly hitting you, so you don't yeah. really say anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's so easy to fall into the. It's not necessarily my problem. Yeah, th- this other person is screwing up. It's not. You know, it hurts. It sucks. Yeah. It, it it feels bad now that I'm older and maybe a, a bit wiser in my years. I I went all abandoned on that because I grew up in early Blizzard, back when Blizzard yeah. was first starting, right? And those core values mean a lot to me. The way yeah. that I always feel about it is, you sign a contract, you follow that contract. That's how that works, right? If you're going to do it, do the job. And those core values were part of that contract. And I watched over the years as people did not follow those core values or twisted them into weapons to hurt people that were just trying to do their jobs correctly. And I always fought for it. And it put me in a lot of really, you know, on a lot of bad sides with people. But positioning yourself in a way where you can't be defeated, you can still fight those types of things. It's just very hard. Like yeah. one of the ones that I fought against was when I was in QA, there was a, an issue that happened where I had to go send an email mic. And the people that were involved were QA localization. QA localization were the victims of this. And they were individuals that had green cards, right? So they if lose employment, they get deported. That's the whole thing with that, right? Oh. So they're, yeah, the position, so they can't fight. Yeah. Because if, if they fight, they could be on the bad side. And now they have to go back to the country that they came from. Was that H1B? That's horrific. Is that, is that I, what we're talking about? I don't about know, I don't know I what the term H1B. was for them. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the term was. All I knew that is they stuff, get, by the way, is if very, they lost employment, it's over. Yeah. I'm shocked that that is, a, I mean, I understand the, the, the base principle of it, which is like, hey, you, you live somewhere it's else H1B. and you want to be able to, yeah, yeah it's H1B. It should be H1B. You, know, you live somewhere else and you want to be a part of whatever country. Every country has a version of this. And like, it's great that we allow work opportunities for people who are highly qualified to be able to do these tasks that we can't find anyone to do, right? Like, that's a, that's a good principled idea. But man, the yeah. fact that when you, when a company hires them, it can turn into complete extortion. It's Again, just and crazy. In, in this scenario, they felt powerless specifically because of that. So yeah. I ended up, I went down the normal route. I reported to my supervisor. I reported to upper management. I waited. I waited two and a half weeks. I went and talked to the people that were affected. They had heard nothing from anyone. And I said, now it's time for me to do this. And I fired off an email mic. 24 hours later, the person who had actually done all of this was fired. And all of those QA localization people were talked to. And they were apologized to. And their, their jobs were like totally fine. Everything was good. And that was it. And it was just like you could see that click collapse because of a system like email mic in place. Yeah. That's why I do that today because the those types of, are... yep, the click, collapse, it's, it, you need, you need a good person that is both engaged with the company and empowered to solve problems to ha- be in that kind of a position. And once they are, they can rip right through that bullshit and just remove it, dude. It, it's like yeah. draining a cyst. That's all it is. We got one last one to do, and I actually I, I think this one's very sweet. The ending to this, sure. But let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it, Thor. Wait, what are you, what are we talking about? What the What's last going tweet? On? The very last tweet. Oh no! Oh no! Wait a minute. Where's the last it? one's so sweet. We didn't read the last one. So I also want to sincerely thank everyone who purchased a mentorship session. This one. Yeah, yeah. Or, we haven't or read portfolio that one. review with me at the end of last year. It quite literally saved me, and I meant that I was able to not go into debt. And I am so hugely grateful and hope you all felt like you were, they were worth it. Yeah. That's, that's really sweet. nice. Yeah. That's really nice. I'm going to go like every single one of this dude's posts. Yeah. I'm going to join you on the, on the like spam. He's going to look like and be spam. like, dude, this one guy just really liked all my tweets. What's wrong with this yeah, guy? Dude. Gross, dude. Look, <laughs> this guy likes spamming me. No, this is the, the reason why this hits me so hard is because it's, it's very similar to what I saw. And it's the moment you, you can tell it's the moment when they don't care about you anymore, where they realize, oh, we've got enough out of this person. It doesn't matter now. And because we've got enough out of them, we can just treat them like dirt. And it's exactly where I was when I left. It's the exact same thing, dude. And it, it's just devastating to see that. And I know that it's happened to so many more because when that lawsuit went through from the state of California, that Facebook page lit up with hundreds of stories. Yeah. Like, there's 800 people in there. There was, like, 1,200 stories. And some of them were way worse than the things that I saw. And some of them were way more minor than the things I saw. It was a massive spectrum of just insane bullshit. And it, I feel really badly for Mike because he didn't know how bad it was. 
he was totally insulated from it. And imagine building something over your life, your life's work, this beautiful thing where you just want to make these cool games and you got all your buddies and you build this thing and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you think that you're doing objectively good. You've got all these good systems in place and it rots out from under you and you don't get yeah. to find out until you're retired. It's pretty like much like termites. Is, like your house looks nice. Yeah. Everything about your place looks great. And then one day you have to rip up a floor tile and you realize your entire foundation is rotted. It's just so rough, dude. And it, it, it was just, it's really sad. It's really goddamn sad. So yeah. Yeah. And what, to be real with you, the grand majority of people that I know who have moved on are much happier, man. I'm way happier yeah. now. I get to make all the things I want to do and I get to right those wrongs for other people that join the industry. Get to help people get into the industry in like a, you know, a healthy way. And share these types of stories. So if they're ever in that kind of situation, you get that shit in writing and you don't trust HR. You know, yeah. that's it. I, that's I, all I think it is. one of the sad things, because I see a lot of people being like, U.S. labor laws are crazy. And, and you know, people defending this and that kind of way. I, I think the sad thing about this is that, you know, I'm sure there's laws that could help prevent certain aspects to this. But, you know, all laws have some level of ramifications and things that it will change. Or, you know, a lot of times it's like a ball you squeeze and certain things come out, certain things go in. And... It just makes me sad because, I mean, the, the true problem is, is that when power comes into play, sometimes people can do wild things. And it's really sad yep. because, like, obviously the guy who the, – the people who made this company made it because they loved games and they built amazing games. And to see something so good just collapse is always just so sad. Because yep. it's like an end of an era. It's kind of like, you know, uh, what's it called? It's like Lord of the Rings, how that's the end of an age, right? This age cannot exist again. There's, there, there may be a new age, a better age, but the age of Blizzard is, we're watching it go from one to another. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, I, I want you guys to know, some of you out there work in HR. You're not bad people. You're doing yeah. a job. But the role that a lot of people don't understand is that HR is there to protect the company. And many yeah. people believe that HR is there to protect the employee. And that's, that's not the case. It's to protect the company from the employee. It's to protect the company when something goes wrong that is going to harm the company because someone has harmed that employee in a way that could be legally problematic, right? Yeah. And that's, I think a lot of people forget that. It's not a treat HR badly, HR is the devil. That's not the thing. They're human beings as well. But mm -hmm. their role is to protect the company from mistakes, frankly. Mistakes and legal problems that they could get into with the employees. There are so I mean to, to be to be fully fair there are also situations where two employees are having an issue and yes the sure. HR is there to protect the company from being exposed to the issue of the two employees but their secondary job is to ensure that the two employees can have some sort of resolution that is good for the yep. team good for the you know org there are some things that are like just employee disputes, focused yeah. yeah there's in, there's good employee focused things that HR does but you're absolutely right at the end of the day you're not number one. The company's number one. And I don't blame them. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Like that's going to exist in every – there is nothing we can do about that not existing. It could yep. come up with a new name. It could be this. It could be that. It's just that's what it is. And, yep. I, and there's some people on Netflix that I genuinely think are great HR people. There's one I can think of right now that she has helped me many times throughout my career because, you know, I'm, I'm maybe a more of a vocal individual. And so I've, I've, I've you know, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've not shied away. Say? Yeah, I've not mm. shied away from the old <laughs> HR office once or twice, and she's been incredibly helpful. Uh, I, I, in fact, at one point in my life, I was getting blackmailed uh, not too long ago due to a stupid decision I made uh, 15, 20 years ago. And so, like, I had to talk to HR about that because, well, guess who was going to be receiving some messages for some things I did 20 years ago? Well, guess who was really, really helpful during that and actually defended me? That was really, Good. really nice. So. There, yeah, I'm talking is, to the primogen guys. Yeah, yeah, for everyone asking. So I'm not going to tell you what the stupid decisions I made uh, 20 years ago was, but let's just say yeah, it's a very fireable offense today. Either, you know? Yeah, I know it's a very fireable <laughs> offense today. I was stupid. I'm a dumb man, but yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm talking to the primogen right now. So the primogen is is very. Yeah, he's got blue hair. Yeah, you know him as the blue okay. hair guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's the he's the Sonic of programming. Actually, yeah, he's converted into Sonic. As you can it, see, he's blue blue hair. It, if you keep this up, I'm going to have to start flossing. Like, you just, you got to stop right now. He codes <laughs> really fast, right? That's why he's Sonic. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Blazingly fast. Yeah. Blazingly fast. Dude, I <laughs> genuinely appreciate you doing this. This was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'm always down so. to talk about this kind of stuff. And it's, it's always, for me, it reinforces why I went indie, man. Like, it yeah. really does. Because, like, I, I remember when I left Blizzard and, um, you know, I, I've, I've known everybody at Blizzard starting out like forever, right? So 
it's um, me, Metzen, and my dad, we had lunch on the day that I quit. And I was talking to Metzen, he's like, why'd you quit? And I was like, and I was going to go to tell him, and he goes, was it the bullshit? I was like, yeah, it was the bullshit. And he goes, damn, Blizzard bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is it not right. always the bullshit? Like, who here it's has quit? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, there is the rare, I've quit once because yeah. it was uh, boring work. Every other I've, time, it's the bullshit. I've only, or it's I've only something ever quit better, bullshit. right? Yeah. Something better can come along. That sometimes happened, but I've never quit yeah. without a job other than just bullshit. You know, it's one of the things that I, I talk to my community about is there's a difference between your job and the work. The yeah. work can be incredibly compelling. The work is the thing you actually do. By the way, guys, the job you. is things like go. management okay. so and I'm all the go. structure and all the meetings and all the bullshit that goes around that. That's not technically you doing the work. You may love programming. You may love automation. You may love doing HR. You may love doing whatever it is, right? Yeah. Doing the thing. You love it. But the job includes all the extra shit that isn't the work. And a yeah. lot of people, they're like, oh, I hate my, I hate everything that I do. I want to quit my job and I never want to do this, you know, career ever again. It's like, no, stop. You hate yeah. the job. You may love the work still. I would keep that so true in mind. If you want to ever quit a job, maybe just quit the job. Don't quit the work. Move somewhere else. And you, you may find, you know, you may find that you actually still love doing that work. You just want it in a different environment or with different people. It's very important to understand that. Is that Primogen raiding me now? <laughs> it is. Secretly. It is. And oh, there's Cheroots in stream now. Oh, God. I, I, unfortunately, I got, I, got, I got work beatings and such to do. Oh, it's okay. I'm trying well, to build a service a nice... with five nines. So I've been experimenting mm. a lot. Unfortunately, all the APIs and everything are in JavaScript. And so I just have like try catches and if state. Like it's, it's crazy. To make something five nines is, is, is already hard enough. <sighs> it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard one to do when you have to catch <sighs> errors that you don't even know exist, you know? But you now you have to do it on JavaScript. Oh. I know, I know. <laughs> Imagine upsetting. if it was in Rust, by the way. I mean, it's not like I don't have blue hair. <laughs> I mean, we could just make you do everything in Ruby on Rails. Would that make you happier? Would you like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that now oh. teach you. Oh, really? You're complaining? Ruby's on Rails for a week. Go. Yeah, there you go. Get it. <laughs> yeah, into the pit with you. Go work at that. Yeah, God damn, dude. Well, hey, I appreciate this very, very much. Thanks for joining me for this. Uh, it was pretty long, so thanks for taking the time. What yeah. is it, like two hours or something? No, I think it's really valuable because I, I think it shows some insight into bad work environments, especially like for the community is to talk about these kinds of things because a lot of the times you won't see this stuff. We're entering a time now where many people are more comfortable talking about awful things that happen in the workplace. And I think it yeah. slowly over time changes work culture because it, it acts as an inoculation to new employees. It shows them, no, this shit is wrong. Go talk to a lawyer, right? Like this is, yeah. that's just how it goes. And it, it should be that way, frankly. It really, really should be that way. You know? I'm on this team. You know, it's, it's hard too. It's hard, it's hard to make change because, you know, I th one thing that it's rarely talked about is that to make change, it requires you to take a risk. Yep. Every, like someone has to take the risk. Are you willing to take that risk? Yep. And, and so I, I, took that, I took that risk when I made AppSec at Blizzard. Like I could have gotten fired for going and talking to the you know director of Battle.net because it was in QA. Yeah. It was just QA kid, and uh, they had this whole Some thing about yellow like, badge legs. Andy walking around <laughs> yeah. trying to like. What's this yellow badge doing in here? I had to go and contact him and be like, "Can you let me into the area? I have a piece of paper for you, please." <laughs> <laughs> and this little thirteen-page document. I was like, "I printed it. I hope that's okay." <laughs> you <know? laughs> you came like, in with the printed one. Oh, that's so I good. Did. I gave him a print. I was like, "Here's this document. I think you should make this job." no matter what it is. And he said, thank you. And he like smiled at me and I was like, cool, I'm going to leave now. And I just, you know, that was it. And then two weeks later he was like, Hey, you should, you should look at this role. And I was like, Oh, I will. I'm in the middle of a task right now. I got to finish the task first. And he goes, no, you should really look at this role. So like I looked at the role and it was, it was my role. And I applied. <laughs> You're like, wait a second. I wrote that. <laughs> that's like, me. Minute. That's mine. You know, like, yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. And that's, that's how I went to battle that man. That's how I escaped the hell that was QA. You know, nice. Well, hey, you have a good day. Thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, Appreciate that. Absolutely. This is Thor, Anytime, by dude. the way, for anyone that doesn't know. Well, they're now all on your stream. But yes, this yeah. is Thor, the one, the only. See, Hey, see you in a week. It's me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, we're going to hang out. Yeah. We, yeah, 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 yeah. We have to, we have to eat something. I don't even know oh, what. Oh, yeah. We're going to eat, eat so many things. So many things. And I, I'm going to get there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear a suit during that night, too. Okay, I are you wearing a suit? I, dude, I was yeah. going back and forth between wearing a... Uh, Wearing a a suit or wearing my hoodie. Okay, that would be really funny. It'd be really funny. But they did say red carpet attire. 
Okay, I have I now, have a suit. That so. being said, I did reach out to like QT Cinderella, and I said, "Does that mean that I can wear a wizard robe made entirely out of red carpet?" And she said, "Lamau, yes." And <laughs> then I realized that she had called my bluff. <laughs> and carpet See, but it's very heavy and warm, which was <laughs> I didn't expect that. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> You, you, was, you don't meme sure. on a memer. Everybody knows this. Yeah. This is like what? This, this, what are you going to have a mistake. land war in Asia next? Like we all know yeah, these things. It's not good. It's not going to turn out well. But no, it's yeah. So I I got a suit. Uh, I now own two pairs of pants, six shirts, and a suit. <laughs> nice. And don't hey, don't you own a piece of land as well? No, I have a I house. Thought, I th yeah, but doesn't it come with a little bit of land? Do you own the land or do you own the house? Do you own? Oh, the no, land? I own it. Yeah, I own I own the house. But I did you know I that just that got, means like a yard. You know? Yeah, no, but that's official. You you may not My realize baronet? this. Uh, the proper English definition of a gentleman, like the oldie time one, is that you own a suit and a piece of land. I'm a gentleman. You now. are a gentleman. I've become a. I've evolved, Chet. I, I became a gentleman last year. I Fantastic. became one last year. Yeah, that's amazing. We're gentlemen. <laughs> We're gentlemen now. This is what gentlemen look like in 2024. <laughs> you that's are a right. scholar and a gentleman, my friend. <laughs> Fantastic. Gentle Thor. <laughs> no. Gentle Thor. Oh, it's so The cursed, Gentle dude. Goblin. Oh, Gentle Goblin. No. The Goblin Gentle Man. Goblin honestly sounds like some sort of weird, like, there's there's something weird going on there. I don't know what it is, but it there. just feels, feels like a way you describe a disease. It's a Gentle I Goblin, need, really. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's more like a speakeasy. You, get, like, go in and everyone's like a goblin, and they're still drinking, and it's fine, and you just, like, don't look at them. That's you know? what it is. It's like, it's like an yeah. inn. It's like an inn in an old game. The Gentle Goblin. Yeah. Yeah, the Gentle Goblin. Yeah. I'm putting got that in my next D, &D campaign. We're having a Gentle Goblin. You should. All right. I got to go. I for real got to go. Right, you have a good one. All right. All take right. Care. See you, dude. Bye. Enjoy your Netflix. Will do. <laughs>